So I'm currently at my sister's place for the weekend, and I wanted to test out Xbox Cloud Gaming on this guy, the backbone for iPhone. I'll talk about this in a minute, but I noticed something with cloud gaming that is gonna become a huge problem going forward. And it's something that developers are gonna to need to address very quickly. Let me explain. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, and the video's not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. Before I get into cloud gaming and the problem that uh, that's going to be facing developers really quickly, I do want to be able to touch on the backbone for iPhone. Hi, Future Steve in editing here. I do want to be able to mention that I am not paid by Xbox or by Microsoft or even by Backbone to be able to make this video. Um, there's no sponsorship whatsoever. There's no paid product placement at all. I paid for the Backbone with my own personal money and the Razer Kishi was a gift that I was given uh, at Christmas for my family. So there's nothing that, uh, that has been paid for in any way, shape or form. Just wanted to make that clear before jumping into my thoughts on the Backbone and the rest of the video. Okay, okay, all right, let, let's go. Uh, this is honestly one of the best controllers uh, that you can be able to get to be able to turn your phone essentially into a Switch, but gives you access to obviously Xbox Cloud Gaming. You can be able to use Steam uh, for uh, uh, streaming from your PC to your phone. Uh, you can also be able to get remote play for both PlayStation and Xbox. And the app that you actually be able to get, it sort of kind of creates this little like uh, store, uh, as it were, like backbone store, but it like interface, but it's it's kind of like a neat, uh, like sort of just interface just for gaming. And all you have to do is just hit the actual backbone button that's on the controller and it will open up that app. And whatever game you have installed on your phone or anything that you want to be able to have access to, whether it's a console or PC, is all right within the app interface. It's great. It's got a ton of different features. I won't get fully into it because there's a whole other videos and, and reviews that are done on, on this particular device. But I will say this, I've been using this and the Razer Kishi uh, for almost like roughly six to eight months. I've had this for maybe a little bit, uh, like a, a month or two, but this is honestly one of the best controllers I've used. It's so comfortable to be able to use and hold uh, and great, uh, like just be able to for long play sessions at a time on my phone. It's very comfortable. The only drawback I have with it is that I have a very thin case for my iPhone 12, with uh, iPhone 12 Pro, which is what I currently use as my day-to-day -day phone. Um, and it's the Apple sort of uh, the leather uh, silicone case, essentially, uh, that, that they sell. But unfortunately, um, the, the this does not fit with the case on, so you have to take the case off. That's the only drawback do I have with this. So with that, that's the back one out of the way. Let's go back into the studio. I'm gonna go back home and I'll, let's talk about cloud gaming's sort of biggest problem. All right, back in the studio, and yeah, again, I love this thing. Definitely would recommend this 1,000%. So first off, I do want to say I do love the idea of cloud gaming. It's what the PS Vita had envisioned. It's what the Nintendo Switch had envisioned with the ability to be able to start a game on your Xbox or on your PC and then be able to pick it up wherever you are, whether you're using uh, a phone, a tablet, or a Windows 10 PC. The fact that I can just literally start a game on on, Dis on Dishonored, on my Xbox, and then if I need to go out uh, or need to hop on a bus or on a train or whichever, or even the back of an Uber, I can take this backbone, I can take my phone, and I can exactly pick up exactly where I left off. And that was something I always thought was cool going back as far as the PS Vita and I just wish that that was something that uh, that would have been able to continued and that is exactly what we're seeing but now with devices that we already currently own and use on a regular basis. However, the biggest problem with cloud gaming is in regards to screen size. The thing that a lot of people are gonna be very interested in when it comes to cloud gaming is the ability to be able to play games on their phone or on their tablet when they're out and about or just sitting in a room that does not have the Xbox or a console or like PlayStation or a Steam setup. You wanna be able to play this on your phone. Uh, that is kind of the, the thing that a lot of people are really interested in. So what is what am I talking about when it comes to screen size. This is something that actually does tie in to a lot to accessibility. And this is something I've been talking about for years when it comes to games. And I think people who outside of accessibility is starting to see this as a problem with uh, uh, with gaming moving forward if we're all in, in, interested in the cloud gaming future. 
and that uh, that is regards to the ability to be able to increase the font size or the UI of games so that they can be able to play on a smaller screen. I've talked about for years the ability to be able to, I want to be able to increase the font size or adjust the UI or customize the UI so that I can be able to play it personally on just TVs and gaming monitors. But when you start moving games into a smaller form factor, like a phone or a tablet, you start to see the issues that will lie when you don't have the ability to be able to do that in the game itself. And that is gonna be a big problem moving forward because now it just makes games that have extremely f small text size even smaller than what we're currently seeing right now. I was, so uh, I'll use it as an example. I was playing Sea of Thieves over the weekend and I was just playing around with it. I was jumping into my own sloop, just kind of private on my own, and I was enjoying it. The connection was great, the graphics were great, uh, the latency from the backbone was great, and I was able to sit on a couch and play Sea of Thieves without even having to connect to my Xbox at home or even have an Xbox nearby. Now, the, the thing is, though, is that I started to see that there was a lot of small text. Now, Sea of Thieves actually does have a pretty large text size to begin with, and I, it's actually not a huge issue for me playing games, uh, uh, playing that game on a monitor or on a gaming TV. This is what Sea of Thieves would have looked like to me if I was on a TV, but when you bring it down to a smaller screen size, this is what you'd see. Obviously a much smaller screen. Now, if I would, I would encourage you, try to be able to read the text that's there. It's not bad when it comes to like, to, to get this particular game, because but when I jump to a smaller size like my phone, which is a pretty decent sized phone, it's like the iPhone 12 Pro. So it's not exactly the largest iPhone 12 that you can be able to get, but it is still a decent size. I still struggled with being able to read the text that was on screen. And I can only imagine that this is pretty much the same across the board even if you don't have a visual disability so what I, the i think what needs to happen is that developers will need to start adding in the ability to be able to adjust their ui or design the ui that will fit for multiple screens there is a really good example of that when it comes to uh, actually to ubisoft they made a game called immortals phoenix rising you may have played it you may not have i would encourage you to be able to check it out because Honestly, it's a really, really great game. It's like uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey meets Breath of the Wild, and it's just an amazing game overall. But what I noticed when I looked at the game for review purposes was that that they designed the game based on the Nintendo Switch because the, that game comes out or came out on multiple different platforms, including the Nintendo Switch. They designed that that UI so that when you're, regardless of whether you're playing it on uh, PC or on Xbox, you can be able to play that, have that same experience on the Nintendo Switch. And they actually kind of designed their UI to be a little bit larger and a little bit more chunkier, if that makes sense, so that it will, you can still be able to play it in portable mode when you're using the Nintendo Switch and you're not losing any experience because you're moving to a smaller screen size. And I could tell that that was something that was deliberate from the beginning on Ubisoft's part because I like that is the same UI, it's the same text size throughout the entire run of the games on all the different formats. And that is something that I think developers are going to have to look into developing is the uh, four is it's not just about being able to play it on a eight a 4k tv at the 120 frames per second yes that'll still be a thing and that's still going to be a, a like a, a, a thing that you're going to design for but now developers are going to have to design based on screen size and if you're having to be able to design a game from a 4k tv 120 frames per second to a smaller phone that is basically, that, but still can be able to output essentially a 4K resolution or at least a 1080p at, at, at the very minimum resolution on a screen, you're gonna have to design a UI that will be able to accommodate that. 
So that is it. That is uh, my thoughts on this. I'm not saying this to be able to call any developers out. I'm not saying this to be able to let I'm upset that games currently couldn't have that because when they designed their game several years ago, they didn't think that cloud gaming was going to be a thing moving forward, at least in regards to uh, for Xbox fans being people being really excited to be able to play games on their phone or on their tablet. Uh, and so I don't fault them for not being able to design with that in mind because the future of cloud gaming wasn't really sort of a thing that was happening at that point. I'm just saying that for right now, as people are excited for cloud gaming, it is something, and if it's to see, the, and, and we're, if we're going to want to see the cloud gaming future and move forward and progress forward, we're going to need to start seeing those adjustable interfaces when it comes to games, and it's all going to be based on screen size, and that not only will help players being able to enjoy games on their TV as well as their phone, but side benefit of it is that's going to help accessibility too, because then it helps people like me being able to play games on my TV, being able to adjust the font size or the UI size so that I can be able to play games on any device and not just the ability to be able to play it on my phone. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to be able to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when new videos come out, hit the bell notification icon. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. And as always, I remain obediently yours. Bye.